Hello, it's Matt Chapman, and I'm here with Maureen uh, Waterston in Connecticut in the US, and Maureen is the Chief HR Officer of Pratt & Whitney. Uh, good evening, Maureen. Good evening, Matt. Nice to speak to you. Yeah, good to speak to you as well. Good to see your, your, your face again. Uh, how are you? Actually, I'm doing very well, honestly. Um, I, uh, I can't complain. We have adapted well to working remotely. My team's doing well. So all in all, very well. That's good. We were just having a chat before filming just about, um, you know, the need to be adapted even in our, our workspaces and, uh, you know, where we find ourselves um, sitting. But how have you found uh, Pratt & Whitney uh, evolving through um, this more recent period? Um, yeah, it's interesting. T to the point about adapting as an organization, Pratt & Whitney is a very high-tech engineering organization. A lot of the work that we do is um, is high-tech, requires uh, heavy duty computing. So there has been in the past sometimes reluctance to think about how people work remotely. And this actually has required folks to change on a dime. Um, you know, it's amazing from one week to the next, next, how you can go from something's not possible or difficult to incredibly possible. So as we speak at the moment, um, uh, are you back in the office or in a hybrid situation? No, actually, I'm still working remotely. Um, okay. The, the remote work seems to be going quite well. People are adapting fairly well. We do have folks who are required to certainly be in the office and in our factories. Are in really across the world, our factories are considered essential workers, our, our employees, and so those folks have really, from day one that we went into quarantine, have been working, um, going in to our to our factories. And we have some folks going into the office, but but other than that, we're really trying to uh, encourage people to work remotely. And just to digress, can you explain um, the magnitude of uh, Pratt & Whitney's operations uh, across across the world and also a little bit about the company for those who don't know it? Yeah, so Pratt & Whitney is a, an airplane engine manufacturer. We have about 43,000 employees um, globally. Uh, we are, as I said, uh, really an engineering and manufacturing organization, very what I would call high-tech, precise um, engineering, as you would expect from somebody who makes a product in which you fly on. Um, and so uh, we have employees across the spectrum from operations working in our factories to development, um, development of our engines and the the all the support that goes around that activity. We're, we're predominantly located um, big sort of in big locations. Uh, the US, Canada, Poland and Singapore are our, are our biggest locations. And then we also have factories in uh, you know, New Zealand and um, China and Israel, Turkey, some other locations as well. So how has um, the, the COVID um, pandemic uh, changed the way uh, business and I guess the workforce has had to operate? I mean, you obviously talked on, you know, the remote working aspect, but tell us what it's been like from your perspective as a chief HR officer. Yeah, it's interesting because I think we have really, as an organization, um, frankly, we, maybe some background. We spent the last few years really working on our culture, and we've been focused on leadership and building leaders that are empowered and that um, that allow their employees to be empowered and that are have some clarity around their purpose and their mission, and so that employees understand what they need to go do. Um, we were faced for the last few years with a significant growth in our business. And so we weren't going to be able to accomplish that without really people being empowered to do those roles. And I think that has served us very well as we've gone into the pandemic, as we spent time coaching our leaders, educating our leaders, training our leaders um, on how to be an empowering leader. And that's enabled them to shift um, and to work remotely. And they people have done a nice job of staying connected with their workforce um, you, you know, you, you hear uh, through the organization that it, leaders are having regular, you know, they're really doing the regular meetings one on one and they're doing one on ones. Um, but I think when, when our workforce, when your employees know what they need to do, it becomes easier to then be remote from them because you're not going to get up and walk down the hall and see, see how they're doing. You're going to be clear on what the mission is, what the task is, and folks are going to go and deliver on what that is. And I think we've done that really well. We've really been able to demonstrate, I think, some agility um, and adaptability to the environment. I think it's a really powerful point you made, which is if people understand what's expected of them, then the short-term fluctuations in the way their life is existing or some of the change matters less to actually just getting the outcome, uh, the outcome done. And I think also the point you made on leadership in terms of leaders being able to articulate that is a is a very powerful one. 
So as you track forward, how do you grow from that base and um, use that competitive advantage, which has obviously been very helpful for you through this time? Yeah, I think um, one of the things that maybe to even to, to add on to my comments and it helps us going forward is, is the, the level of um, transparency we've built within the organization. And I think we've been key, critical with communication over the last four months, uh, regular, regular routine communication to our leaders and to our workforce so that they understand what's happening and that's where, what's going on. I think that that actually does serve us well. Listen, I, I'm in the aerospace industry. We all know that times are a bit challenging <laughs> um, and might continue to be challenging for for um, a certain period of time going forward. And what we want to be able to do is to be clear with employees and have our leaders be clear with employees about what they're expected to do, right? So that that's going to continue going forward. We reprioritized for 2020. Um, we've communicated that to our workforce. We've communicated that to our employees. And just developing those muscles and those um, skill sets has really is really going to help us as we continue to navigate the industry that's going to going to be ahead of us going forward. So, in your role as a chief HR officer, you're obviously leading the HR strategy um, across the world. Um, how are you seeing the HR role morph? Uh, through this uh, this time, and what are you expecting? <laughs> yeah, I think that um, for those of us in the HR uh, profession, uh, we have seen perhaps new renewed appreciation for the value that we we all bring to the table. Um, and you know what I what I see in my in the HR team and that I work with um, at Pratt and Whitney is first of all folks that are completely dedicated. And um, have really demonstrated their ability to to be agile. And I, I know I've used that word before, but I think about being in an organization that was growing significantly over the last four or five years. You know, at Pratt and Whitney, we hired probably 20, 25,000 people start from the beginning of 2016 through the end of, of uh, 2019. And we were focused on developing those folks, right? Training, development, um, and, and employee education, and shifting. That skill set from being in person um, to virtual. You know, how do you think about providing some of those skill sets? How do we shift from an organization that's been focused on hiring to an organization that now wants to be focused on retention? And I, I'm just really proud of the team's ability to have um, demonstrated that agility and being being adept in making those changes. It's not. You know, it's funny because when I talk to the groups and I do skip level meetings with my uh, my HR team, I'm not sure that they always see that they're doing it because they're in it. They're in the thick of it. But then when I we start talking to them about what they're working on and I, I just kind of remind them that they've really demonstrated their ability to to move and react and be responsive to the business conditions that we're in and um, shift to how they're providing and supporting their customers. Yeah, you don't realize how much you're transforming when you're actually in the moment of uh, <laughs> transformation, do you? Right, right. No, it's true. And so how do you equip uh, HR um, team members, I guess, with the ability to go forth in this ever-changing world? Because like right now, obviously, everyone is relying on what they've learned, but also applying it in the now. Um, there, there comes a time where you know, we 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 need the strategic planning or the the, the 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 sort of release from the now to actually exist in the in the future. What comes to mind on that? Yeah, that it, 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 that's a great question. I I think we're a little bit in the thick of the now still, um, hmm. for a large part of the, the the HR team. But I think what what we are really focused on is trying to first of all, I have a big believer in communication, right? So we actually have regular multiple times a week meetings with the HR team just to kind of keep them present and up to date. They're not privy necessarily, necessarily to all the conversations that we're all having, um, but I want them to be aware and we, they need to be connected to what's happening from an organizational perspective. And, you know, sort of co start connecting the threads for, for, the, for the organization um, so that they understand what the decisions are, why we're making the decisions, um, you know, I remember my early days um, as an HR professional and, you know, the first time you hit a tough patch, you don't know how to do some of this work. And so really taking the time to make sure people understand and, and um, know what they have to work on. 
some of our some some of my um, colleagues, not just in HR but across the company, uh, when you think about from a generational perspective, they actually haven't really been through these tough times. Some of them have started working since the last um, crisis and you know the global financial crisis. 2008 time period, um, you know, but I think about my own kids, they're in that age of working, starting to work now and have not experienced these types of, these kinds of tough times. So I think when I think about the HR community, making sure that they um, understand the impact of the work that they do uh, on the business, being able to shift to lower cost opportunities to do training or being able to shift to um, supporting virtual um, virtual talent reviews or being able to do some of those types of things is really helping support, support the business and being connected to the business strategy. Yeah, it's a magnificent time to be um, in the HR profession. Thank you very much, uh, Maureen. It was Maureen Waterston, Chief Patriot Officer of Pratt & Whitney. Thank you, Matt.